Hey guys, very excited about this breakdown video. Sometimes when you're the largest person on the mat, the strongest guy in the gym, big guys, you have a trouble because you go against people that are a little bit lighter than you, a, bit, a little bit smaller than you, not able to kind of resist your, some of your movements or able to push you around. And in this video, we cover a match between one of my ultra heavyweights, Matt. He goes against another scrappy guy. And there's some moments where I feel a few adjustments could have made his weight and his leverage and everything come together and make it even easier for him to score the victory. Or did he score the victory? You're gonna have to watch, check it out. All right, hello everybody. We're gonna do another breakdown video here, here with one of my students, Matt, who is uh, on the left side here ultra heavyweight very good athlete very competitive and doesn't like to lose so we're gonna see him go at it here I haven't seen this match this is at the next gen competition right here you can see on the top left name of the tournament I wasn't at this tournament so I'm excited to see how this fight plays out to start the action here so Matt's coming out he's starting off with the lefty grip he's got the sleeve yeah, the guy seems happy with his, uh, he's got his right hand on his collar, both working for a takedown. Now you're going to find a lot of times at these heavier weight divisions, most people want to get the takedown. Nobody wants to pull guard. And the lightweights, it's quite opposite. How many people pull guard because they believe it's easier to sweep, get the sweep points than it is to pass a guard because guys are so flexible, so rubbery, and so have such a strong technique, it's hard to pass that guard, hard to really solidify the position. Many times lightweights will pull too because they want to do a bear and bolo and try to bypass the card pass and be able to get right onto the back position right off the hop. But Matt's going for the takedown here. He gives up on his opponent. Really has his hips back. I might open him up later for snap downs. And I can see right away. Oh, single it shoots him for a high crotch takedown. Let's see if he gets it. Matt's hopping around, trying to showing good balance there and gets the takedown. So let's let's go back there and see why that happened and see what uh, Matt could have done to let's see here to defend so you see the guy his opponent steps in grabs a leg so what makes this a high crotch takedown as opposed to a single leg the opponent's head is outside Matt's hip instead of with a single leg, it's going to be inside. It would be on his stomach. So that leg would probably be more forward. This would be more over here. And he'd have the leg between his legs like he's doing now. But his head would be inside. So the high crotch takedown is going to require a different defense. I think Matt was trying to figure out what position he was in there. Then he ended up getting caught behind a little bit. And then the guy finished the takedown. So right here he's starting to hop. He's using a lot of balance. Okay, right there is a good opportunity to defend. I'm going to show you what I think Matt could have done to make his opponent's job much tougher here and be able to score his own takedown in the, in the process. So first thing here is it's a pretty good position because he's kind of around the corner now. With the, with the high crotch, you want to make sure that this arm, his opponent's arm, does not wrap around this leg and get the double leg. So if he got around there, he'd be able to get the double leg. And that would be not very good. <coughs> so his opponent, uh, to, to stop your opponent from doing that is Matt holds with his left hand on this tricep. So you can see the opponent's tricep would be kind of here. Matt would hold that tricep against his thigh. You can't see it from this angle, but he would hold it here so the guy couldn't switch to a double leg. Then once that's done, he could hop around the side. He's kind of almost there already actually. So this is a good idea to kind of get around that shoulder. And then this forearm could come across the neck, so this would be his fist. So instead of like going for a cross face, you see here he's going kind of a cross face, it would go more like a necktie here, like tying up the neck like that. And then this uh, leg would be lifted in the air. So he's going to block here. And now his left hand is going to grab around the far thigh. So Matt's left hand, which would be over here, shoulder, would drape behind the guy and then around that leg over here on the the opponent's right leg and he would hug it. So then three things would make his opponent fall here. He would first dr uh, drive his leg, see the leg that's being held, he would step that past the opponent's body, he would push his forearm, which the hand was here, he would push that sideways as well, and then he would lift that leg with his left hand, he would lift that leg up and over. So you have all three 
motions going in one direction, then his opponent would stumble down here and he'd get the takedown. Matt would get the takedown. So as you see it play out now, he's kind of got stuck in this position. The opponent just kind of tried to wear him out, make him lose his balance. It's hard to hop forever, and eventually gets the takedown. Matt does a good job right there trying to get back to his feet, but his opponent drives in and scores the two points for the takedown. And that's doing a good job of trying to make space right away, never accepting the side control. So you see right here, he's already making space here. This guy doesn't have that tight of a cross face. I think if that elbow was a little deeper, it'd be a lot a lot worse. I'll bet you Matt would be able to turn on his side here. And this hand's not really covered or underhooked or anything like that. So Matt should be able to turn inwards. We'll have to see in what's... I'll have to take a look. So he's pushing away. Making a little space. He's turning to his knees. He's turning inwards, trying to get back to guard. Okay, that kind of went... Kind of went bad for one reason. It was the right idea. Always a good idea to turn in and try to get that guard back. But the problem was Matt's grip. Now, if you look at his grip, it's right here on the gi. So the gi is moving all over the place. So you see that when I play it again, this is pushing, pushing, shaking all over the place, this gi. So he really can't get a good grip. This is not bad here. But this right hand should be underneath the guy's stomach, holding his pants right by the hip. So now it's going to actually push him away. So he's going to make a nice straight arm with this and hold in the hip. And that won't shift. So when it's right on those pants, kind of right by the hip bone, his opponent can't jump to take his back later. His opponent can't run to a different position. And then Matt would be able to get to his knees. Now, what's holding him back here also is his left arm. So if he, instead of holding on, he should push with this hand, which we are. And then he's going to get up on this elbow. So that would be his elbow. Then he would turn all the way to his knees. And then he would shoot back into the half guard or to the full guard there. But as we play, you'll see that gi kind of flips all over the place, see? He turns, so he did a good job right there. See, he's got his elbow, he's about to turn to his knees, but the guy can go behind him because he doesn't have his hip. And he jumps one hook in. So that was the right idea, just, uh, just going to clean that up just a little bit, then he'll have no trouble here. Opponent's kind of going for his neck, Matt tucks his chin. Now his opponent actually could do something here. So this is a very common position is when one hooks in, so his opponent has his right hook in, but he can't get the left hook in. The floor is in the way. Matt's obviously blocking with his elbow, with his knee. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of, many obstacles here to get that hook in. So what his opponent should do is actually roll over this shoulder, his left shoulder, and use the momentum to pull Matt over this way. So his, see how his right hook? The right hook would actually pull the thigh and bring him all the way this way. Now he'd have to spin him so much that they would actually finish this way, that his opponent would have that right hook in right here, then he would just have to make the left hook here, if that makes sense. So, but that's uh, you know kind of a risk. Sometimes you don't want to go to your own back there if you're not uh, confident with it. And we'll have to see how this goes now. But Matt actually wants to do some kind of the same thing. He actually wants to run roll over this shoulder, but stop. So instead of get letting the guy face him this way, he's going to stop facing him this way. So then Matt would be able to get half guard on this opponent's leg here. Start getting his back to the mat. So that's where the, the battle kind of lies there. So let's go forward and see what happens. Matt Turner, so that was, that could put him in a bit more trouble. See how he rolled over his right shoulder? So now his opponent has the bottom hook. So you can't see it, it's off screen, but it's that bottom hook, that right hook is in. Now it's just a matter of him getting that left hook. So I'll have to see if Matt can stop that. But it's going to be a little bit of work, especially if the person has a seatbelt on him or has a hand on the collar setting up a choke. Can't see it from this angle. Now, if you guys take a real close look at this, a very key detail, you see the scorekeeper is not even watching. See, he's not watching there. He's watching over here. I think maybe his friend's competing over here, but he's uh, he's not focused. This guy, this guy's on point. That's something to keep in mind as well. I don't know if it's going to influence the match, but let's let's go forward and see. So he's kind of on Matt's back here, but he can't get that second hook. So definitely going to get an advantage for this. Trying to put that hook in. I can't see what's happening. Referee stopping the match. Okay, he calls that scorekeeper in. I think they're going to try to maybe drag these guys back in. I don't know if that's a good idea. Some big boys. So they're going to grab on. They're going to do it. And they pull. And yeah, he's like, no, it's not happening. Decided to stand up. Matt gets a little, <laughs> a little chuckle out of it. And they start back on the feet. Oh, two points. They gave him two points. Matt's asking why. And 
you talk to the referee, you get a penalty. So let's just go over what happened there. So if you are, if you go out of bounds and you're caught in a submission, and the the escape was legit, but it put you out of bounds, they'll start you back on the feet and then give the other player two points. So I think that's what happened there. But I don't know what it didn't look too threatened there. I don't know if he had a full on bow and arrow grip on his collar or something like that. But the referee gave him two points. If it was just a an advan advantageous position, then the opponent should get an advantage there. Start back on the feet. Or try to restart them back in the center in the same position if you can duplicate it. If there's no submission on, that's a little easier to do. So the referee must have saw a submission. Now Matt obviously was, wasn't familiar with that rule. He talked to the referee, asked him what was going on, and boom, automatic penalty. So it's always better to wait till after the match and then ask those questions. You see going forward now. Working for the takedown, so Matt's behind on points now. Look for him to turn it up, put a little pressure on. That's something to think about. Sometimes at the beginning of the match, you, you're a little bit worried about to get scored on, so you don't always go for your moves 100%. But when you do that, you kind of hold back, and maybe there was an opportunity for you to tap the guy or an opportunity to get a takedown on them or do something, and you kind of, you know, the time just goes down and you're comfortable because it's 0 0, or maybe you could have been winning that match. So I think, in, in my opinion, you just got to get out there and just go for it. Put the pressure on them. Do your best attacks. But I think we're going to see Matt attack more aggressively now. And probably see his opponent go back to the same attack because that was something that worked for him. Yeah, exactly like that. He tried the takedown again out of bounds. These, these mats are way too small for uh, any any competitor, actually, but especially for these big guys. One or two steps and they're already out of the uh, matted area. Matt working the balance. Now you see... Nice collar drag takedown. So why does this work? Okay, so you see how far the guy's hips are back. So that tells me that he's very difficult to grab his legs, very difficult to single leg, very difficult to foot sweep. Um, but he's very vulnerable. See how balanced he is here? So Matt feels it, and he goes for it. And again, that's because he needs to get those points. He's got to make a move. So he gets out of the way, boom, the guy falls forward easily. Let's see if he finishes it. No, out of bounds. Again, a small small mat, but there was something that Matt could have done there, I think, to solidify that takedown. So as soon as they fall, nice collar drag, he got out of the way, is, fast forward, see when he falls? The right hand can grab. So right now, I think the right, right hand is pulling the collar as well. But the right hand grabs around this leg and hugs it. Almost like the defense we were talking about earlier. Kind of that single leg reaching here. He's going to be able to as he climbs, he has the collar, so his left hand's pulling the collar down still, so the guy's head's dropping. That's why his head's not up right now. Otherwise, it would be peeking out right here. And then if he lifts that leg, so he has that leg held, he lifts that leg over the top, pulls the head down, and then you have that circular motion, and the opponent will end up on their back instead of on their knees getting across the mats like this. So you see, boom, 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 the guy's athletic, he's strong enough, he gets up, and it's just an advantage. Now, if he did take him down, he'd probably get an advantage anyways. It was still out of bounds, but... Maybe the referee would see the position, restart them, and Matt would have the two points and be on the in the top position. So I worked one again. He does the same thing. So the same thing. He felt the weakness. His opponent had his butt back, and he dragged him again right to side control. So now he's got the two. They're in bounds, and Matt's going for side control. Okay. So this is similar, actually, to what Matt's opponent did to him. If you look here, Matt used that forearm kind of to crush him down at first, and then again his body weight very solid guy so he can hold a lot of people down here but sometimes when these guys the big guys get against each other in the same division they're all used to training with a little bit smaller people so they, they can hold people down just with their weight but in this case I like to see that left arm go right around the head super tight cross face and turn the guy's jaw so he's looking this way that way when he tries to turn it he can't and then that weight distributed is going to be you know holding him down crushing him down in that right underhand under right hand <laughs> could go into the underhook here. So we'll see if he can hold him down, but I, I'll bet you this opponent gets his guard back. We'll have to see. Yeah, there it is there. So I think that's going to make a little extra work. Now if you pass, you worked really hard to pass a guard, now the guy gets you back in the guard, he could be a half guard master, and now you have to fight trying to avoid these sweeps. It can be tough to pass, so it's important that when you get to that side control, you make the guy pay, you make him work, you don't make it an easy escape. I think a couple of adjustments there on Matt would have been, wouldn't have to pass again here, but I think he's He's in a good position now to be able to pull off another pass. So he's got the weave pass. Let's take a look at that. Let's back that up a little bit. So what makes that a weave pass? So this is one of my favorite passes here. So he grabs the collar. 
Now right there, I bet you Matt had a feeling that this guy doesn't doesn't defend the weed pass very well because the guy let him get the collar. Once they do that, now his right hand's gonna go over this leg between the legs and grab the pants here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. But let's take a look. So he's up, see that hand? That right hand is holding the bottom legs pants. Boom. So you see right here. He's holding the bottom legs pants, so the opponent cannot bring his knee up and stop this walk around guard pass here. The fight is not in the uh, down here. A lot of people think push, 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 get your knee out, try to free the feet, try to push the guy's head away. But the fight is actually all in this grip. If you take that grip off, the move falls apart, and the guy will have to do something different. But most people don't know that, and they have to work so hard and a lot of strength, especially the, with Matt on top of you like that in a pike position. Very strong. Let's continue with the match. He's passing, so he kind of stumbled a little bit there, lost his grip, but he goes back to it again because he realizes his opponent does not have the best defense for that. Look, he's just working. He's trying to push. He's trying to push. Good luck. I'm trying to push a big guy like Matt. Matt controls him d down. Now, again, he has that, f that forearm in front of the face, so he's got him flat. I like this. Guy can't get his guard still. The weight is down. Beautiful. This arm, I like to see it under the head, controlling tight here. Cross face. But this guy, I'll bet you he's getting tired. He had to work really hard there just to try to stop that weed pass. And I don't know if he's going to be able to turn in again like he did last time. So as the match gets later later on, as you get later into the match, I should say, it gets a little tougher for the, the bottom person to keep up that fight if they're using a lot of strength at times. So Matt's in side control now. Now he's doing something that we call armpit view here. So he put his arm over. So all the opponent sees is the armpit and the ribs. So he can't really see Matt. This is usually a position used to mount. He's going to kick his foot over or he's going to go for a Kimura on this arm. Many options from here. I'll we'll have to see what he does. But it's a good position. Now Matt's doing a great job of keeping his weight right over the solar plexus. Many times people put their elbow up here and then the weight's kind of on the chest. Like the bony part. Sternum. But you want it right down where, where they breathe. And we'll continue forward. So he's, keep, he's keeping his head down nice. He knows the guy's suffering. You can see it on his face. Guy desperately tries to bridge. You know, you can't breathe. All of a sudden, you're like, I got to get out of here. He makes a tough bridge, and then it just gets worse. Okay, you, you see that? So you'll see the guy look at the clock. Right there. Look at that. What do you see? See the guy look at the clock. How much time left? This is if, as if you have a coach or a friend, he's, he's, he's looking at the clock, he's checking the clock, he's getting tired, right? And that can sometimes break a less experienced fighter even more and pump up your guy as well. So he's trying to mount, and there it is. He kicks into the mount position. Nice job. Climbing into a higher mount, trying to smother with his chest. That's a good job. You always want to try to put that gi... In, into their face a little bit, especially if you're a little bit sweaty. You know, see that gi right there? It's hard to breathe. He's trying to inhale through a gi. Man, the other day I was rolling and I got caught, caught in the bottom of half guard and I was going for an underhook and this, my opponent, my my train partner actually, his gi was right in my mouth and I couldn't breathe and it, it freaked me out. And I, you know, I've been doing this a long time, but sometimes you get that gi in your face and you're a little tired or whatever it is, you're just having a bad day in the office and everything seems 10 times worse. So that gi in the face is very good. And just trying to get the thing going here. Okay, so what I'd like to see too though, I think, so he's got the air kind of cut off here, but another spot to do it is sit that butt, sit the butt down heavy on their solar plexus. Spread the hands out and put the butt down heavy. And that'll cut off the air supply from the solar plexus as well. So if you get a little bit of cut, cutting the air here, a little bit of cutting the air here, you know, make the guy, you know, struggle and make a lot many mistakes. So Matt's here. He's again, he's smothering. He's trying to get that climb into a little higher mount. And again, that butt's just kind of hovering. See so all the weights on the kneecaps rather than on the guy's stomach, and that's what allowed him to turn there. Matt has a good chance to maybe either take the back here, go for an arm lock, but he decides to flatten out. Good job. Well done. I really like how his feet are underneath the butt. You see right there, you can see the feet under the butt, nice and tight. And again, it can make him suffer even more. You see how much, right there, you see how comfortable the guy is here. He's got a lot of room, but if that butt sits back really heavy, he can make his life miserable there. 
It's already miserable already though. Matt's doing a great job. And he's turning over. Look for Matt to take the back or get the arm lock and arm lock it is. Nice job. That was a great match. So you see Matt came back from adversity. He was behind in points. And just slowly tried to start to figure out his game. Got the takedown. Figured out how where he was weak in the takedowns. Dragged him down again. Got to a dominant position. Guy got back early in the match. Second time he didn't have the energy to get back in. Matt held him down very well. Ended up getting the... Uh, getting the win there. So that was an awesome match by Matt. And some of the things that we talked about. So first one was being, um, let's talk about the cross face. When we get side control, we re reach around the neck and really grab the cross face and turn him over flat rather than just putting the forearm in his throat. We talked about the defense to the high crotch. Instead of treating it like a single leg, you got to jump around the corner, block with your forearm in their neck, grab their leg and drive them to the ground. Then we have, <coughs> excuse me, then we had uh, a couple other situations off the top of my head. We had the, when we did the collar drag, when we drag them down, we grabbed their leg and turned them over. When Matt did that nice takedown, but ended up being out of bounds and the guy didn't flip over. Again, we don't talk to the referee till after. And again, always be respectful to the referees because if you complain too much, they're going to remember you. And next time it comes to a close decision where they have to pick you or the other guy, they're going to pick the other guy. They don't have to say nothing about it. They might just remember, you know, that guy caused a little problem before or whatever. He was had a bit of an attitude. And uh, they all tell the referees. And just uh, nothing really comes out of it. You know, sometimes you'll be on the side of a good of a bad call. And sometimes it's going to work against you. So it's going to work for you or against you. So just always be humble. Matt did a good job. He just asked a question. And the referee gave him a penalty. And just got back to business and won the match. So that was the perfect way to do it. And afterwards, you can discuss with your coaches or discuss with the, discuss with the referee specific rules so hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown and i look forward to doing the next one very soon thanks for checking out the video and be sure to visit the website joslinsonline.com for more techniques tips and other things that i want to share with you